Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Port Charles 411, all about Brooke Lynn Ashton. And it's important to understand that her name is not Brooklyn. It's right. Brooke space Lynn, which a lot of people put together. Put together. Which, I mean, rightfully so. She is named after the city, so. And they don't usually refer to her as Brooke. They no. They refer to her as Brooklyn. Correct. So, as we mentioned on Monday's recap, we weren't 100% certain if we were going to be doing the show today because of the preemptions pushing back things, but we were pleasantly surprised that she showed up on Monday as scheduled. Yep. And was named on Tuesday's episode. Yeah. Because that would have been tricky to do. Oh, right. Yeah. We still would have done it, I think. Yeah, because we can explain to you who she is. But we also hate doing spoilers and... You told me that she was coming back. I had no clue. I'm sorry. I had no clue. It popped up on my Facebook as some random ad from some company I'd never seen before. And then I couldn't not, I couldn't not read it. It was right there. Right. So, because like we're trying to figure out who we're going to do and you're like, you probably already know. And I'm just thinking like, who's coming back? (laughs) And that one I was not expecting at all. Yes. But I asked you before I spoiled it for you. You did. I wasn't going to be your spoiler. You absolutely did. You absolutely did. So I appreciate that. You're welcome. So there you go. Amanda's going to get us started. Yep. I'll get us started on how Brooke got into Port Charles, born into Port Charles. Brooke Lynn Ashton, born 1996 and then revised to 1986, which is a huge Freaking leap. If you ask me. Didn't, Lulu was 10 years too, right? That's, yes. Yes. And it's too many. But anyway, was named after Brooklyn, New York, in case you hadn't guessed that, where her mother and father had spent many happy times together. But at the time of her birth, Brooke's parents were estranged. Lois Cirillo had returned to her family in Bensonhurst after she realized she didn't want her daughter growing up around the quarter mains. Which I feel like, how did you have a baby with him? I know he was Eddie Main, but still. You were There was something going on around that quarter time, mains though. enough that you should have thought of that before you got pregnant. I don't remember. I don't either. Because I feel like there was something significant happening that she was like, yeah, you know what? We should do Ned's Great Love. And Aww. then we would have to talk about Lois. I mean, I we like could just it. talk about Lois <laughs> because we talked about her with Jax. Yes. But unless they surprise us with her coming back, we have no real reason to get into it. It would be so amazing to see her and Olivia throw down. Oh, that would be so good. Oh. So good. Could you picture the two? And we're talking Rena Sofer, not recast. Right. So Rena Sofer going up against Lisa, and I can't pronounce her last name. Olivia. The woman who pleased Olivia. (laughs) Oh, I Would be amazing. That would be. Because they grew up together. They knew Mm -hmm. each other. So. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That would be We're fun. writing storylines. Because <laughs> we like to do that. Yep. Okay, continue. Sorry. Sorry. Her feelings <laughs> were cemented after Ned Quartermain failed in his attempts to make Lois and their record business his first priority. He returned to ELQ Enterprises and Lois returned to her family. Lois brought Brooke to meet Ned a few months after she was born. Although Lois claimed she had come to, hadn't come to reconcile with Ned, it was clear Lois and Ned were still in love with each other. Mm. But after she overheard him blackmailing his cousin Justice, Lois left town with her daughter. Ned saw his daughter on birthdays and introduced her to Chloe Morgan when he was married to her. Which Brooke, was a fake marriage. Yep. Brooke adored Chloe and was none too thrilled to learn several months later that Alexis Davis had become Ned's new love. She later later came to like Alexis, but couldn't understand what was happening when Alexis left her father at the altar. This was aged up, Brooke? Yeah. No. That so was, this was correct age? They're, yeah. They're, okay. like, just filling in. That was kind of her background of how, whatever. So okay. then she shows back up again in early 2014 using Lynn as her name. After her haunting L&B studio, which was Lois and Brenda. Yes. Oh, we have to do something on that, too. We do. Haunting L&B studio with her talented singing voice, she becomes friends with Georgie Jones and Dylan Quartermain, who was unaware that Dylan Quartermain was her uncle, which is weird. Oh. <laughs> See? When my brain was like, that sentence isn't right, but it is. It is. Oh. <laughs> the sentence is 
Impressed by her voice, they persuaded her to record a demo tape, but Lynn remained adamant that she only sang for the joy of it and didn't want to profit from it, which was something her mother wanted her to do. Lynn's true identity and ties to the Quartermains came out after a man claiming to be her father attempted to take her home to her mother. She escaped by stealing his car, but Dylan later turned them into the cops, and they wound up back at the Quartermains. I don't remember that. I feel like I do. It must have been, like, super early, because how long could she be in Port Charles and no one know who she is? Right. But I'm not sure. I don't remember that part of it happening. I can't remember it. Like, oh my gosh, I totally remember that. But okay. Like, you saying it doesn't sound crazy. Okay. No. But it like, feels like we need to explore YouTube. Maybe. I didn't yes. want to get lost in YouTube today because they did a good job of summarizing. They who really did. She was. Oh, who's they? Oh, I'm sorry. It's General Hospital Wiki. Of course. Of course. Because they do an awesome job. They do. Most of the time. Most of the time. Sometimes. <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> they don't. They really don't. They really don't. And other times they make sentences that make complete sense, like that one. And I'm like, what? That's not. Oh, wait, that is that right. Is. Sorry. Dylan's her uncle. Dylan's her uncle. Lois wanted to take Brooke back to Bensonhurst with her, but Ned persuaded her to let Brooke stay and persuaded Lois to stay in town. Lois repeatedly tried to convince Brooke that she should sing professionally, but each time they ended up in a fight. Seeing how hard Brooke fought her mother, Ned took a different approach. He persuaded her to sing with him just for fun, but she remained strongly opposed to singing professionally. She was even willing to let Sage sing one of her songs rather than sing it herself. I love Sage! (laughs) Mother and daughter had the same idea of bringing Edward Quartermain roses after Lila Quartermain died, each of them regretting the fact that Brooke never got to know Lila. Brooke finally sang for a crowd at her great-grandmother's funeral, Later, she misinterpreted the situation when Lois tried to convey how proud she was of her daughter. Believing that Lois wanted to capitalize on the event, Brooke yelled at Lois, who took off, hurt by her daughter's words. Brooke's relationship with her mother continued to go poorly as Lois became involved with Lorenzo Alcazar. And we just talked about how I didn't yeah. really remember this because it was the other Lois, not... It was the recast. Yeah. But as I read it, then it refreshed my memory. Brooke and Sage was... Alcazar's niece. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. I no, said that. that's okay. Brooke hated that her mother would date a thug when she was always told not to. In an attempt to give her mother a taste of her own medicine, Brooke began getting cozy with Diego Alcazar, Courtney Jax's foster child. Diego had made his desire to work for Sunny obvious to anyone who would listen, and Lois wasn't a fool. Diego and Brooke grew closer when Brooke walked in on her mother and Lorenzo shortly after the two had made love. Enraged, Brooke ran away with Diego, where the two escaped to Mexico to find Diego's sister, Maria. Georgie and Dylan accompanied the duo, and the four were arrested when Maria denied knowing Diego and let her fiancé arrest the group of teenagers. She later had them released and warned Diego to get out of Port Charles. Brooke and Diego then began their mission to discover why Maria, Maria didn't want Diego in Port Charles. Working together, they determined that Sonny must have killed Diego's father, and Diego decided to find out why. Dressing as a delivery girl, Brooke attempted to divert Max. I love Max. Um, Max's attention while Diego tried to break into Sonny's apartment. Sam caught the two before they could enter the apartment. Jason agreed to help Diego find out if Sonny had anything to do with the murder of Diego's father, and Courtney arrived to bring the two home. Diego and Brooklyn did not last long because he soon developed an interest in Maxie Jones. Everyone wanted Maxie. Yeah. Poor Georgie. No wonder she was so... Dylan wanted Georgie. I know she he did, but no wonder she was so longing for a relationship because everybody wanted yeah. Maxie. Well, she was the smart bookworm. Yeah. Yeah. And Maxie was not. <laughs> she wasn't the nerd that Georgie was. <laughs> True. True. I'm not saying I don't understand why. I'm, I'm not saying, saying Maxie's dumb. I'm just saying that <laughs> Georgie was the nerd. Yes. And I loved her. Yes. She. I wish they hadn't killed her. I know. Can we bring her back from the dead, please? That would be great. I don't see how they would ever do that, but that would be great. Mm-hmm. Well, she came back for the 50th, didn't she? As a guest? It's like a memory, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Him wanting Maxie left Brooklyn out in the cold. After graduating high school, Brooklyn enrolled at Port Charles University and ended up having Maxie as a roommate. After being drugged at a party, Brooke learned that there were nude pictures of her circulating on the internet and elsewhere. She began to suspect that Diego was her stalker, but he kept coming up with all the right answers for every one of her questions. Ultimately, Brooke learned that her suspicions were right. 
Diego had indeed been stalking her as payback for what Brooklyn and the others had done to Sage. A short while later, Brooklyn decided to leave Port Charles and join her mother in New York so she could pursue her music career. And that is where it stops. So I was just thinking of something. Yes. Disney Plus is out now, yep. and we got it. They have a lot of old TV shows. Oh. So, like, DuckTales is on there, Gummy Bears. <laughs> <laughs> Being that Disney owns ABC, wouldn't it be awesome? Oh, that would be If amazing. they could figure out a way to give us 57 years of General Hospital. Oh. I'm going to write them a note. <laughs> we would have to do nothing but sit around and watch General I know. Hospital all day, every day. I think day. I figured it out by this weekend, so when I have my surgery, I could just be <laughs> in heaven. No, because then he'll be calling me. Do you know that in 1970, blah, 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 and I'll be like, no, she didn't remember. I wasn't born then well, either. Well, you'll just have to cancel your weekend and watch all of General Hospital. Yeah. I don't think they're going to do that for us, but that's a great idea. No. Yeah. Maybe. All right. So okay. so you're picking up where she pops back in again yep. in 2010. In 2010. So you just did 2004 to 2006. So they did but, age her up a little bit for that. It just says they changed. she would have been 11. They changed her birthday. They make it sound like it was one fell swoop. Originally, she was born in 96, and then they turned it around to she was born in 86, which makes her currently 33 instead of 23. So they were probably huge. aged when your story started. It must have been, because she shouldn't have been the right age to be hanging out with Maxie and them if she was just right. born. And Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Okay. So, and she didn't really do a lot when she was a baby because, like we said, she was born off campus. So, right, right, yeah. And they didn't let Ned have her except for her birthdays and stuff. That was yep. why I tried to keep that in the background so that you knew that you only saw her for important stuff. Yep. Like most of the babies, anyway. All right. So in 2010, Brooke had been cut off from her trust fund after getting in trouble for credit card credit card fraud. Brooke refused to turn to Edward and Tracy for help because they wanted her to enroll in college and study business instead of allowing her to pursue her music career. And it was funny because she was asking Edward for money and he's like, yeah, sure. Um, the condition that you enroll in college and blah, 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 blah. And she's like, never mind. I'll just. Which is so funny because she was so opposed to the music career before. I mean, that's the first yep. three paragraphs of what I just. Red. And I remember yep. her, Lois wanted her to be one of their main artists for right. L&B, and she would not do it. So Carly caught Brooke hustling people for money in the park. So Carly offered Brooke the opportunity. Oh, and at this time, she was Carly Jacks. Mm -hmm. Offered Brooke the opportunity to make quick money in exchange for seducing Dante away from Lulu. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. She agreed. And Carly hired her to sing at the Metro Court as a cover story to explain their meetings. Dante was excited to see her, to see Brooke, because they had grown they up together. together. Yeah. And Lulu was immediately jealous of their friendship. And this was Julie Berman. Mm. Mm. She played that well. That jealousy was real. Yeah, because I'll get to it. Carly arranged for Brooke to move in across the hall from Dante, which increased Lulu's insecurities. Brooke made herself at home in Dante's apartment, and she reminisced about the old days in Bensonhurst with Dante and his mother, Olivia. And I did watch a couple things on YouTube. Of course she did. Of course. <laughs> and she asked Olivia to help her make dinner for Dante and Lulu because she just wanted to like show her appreciation mm. and blah, 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 blah. And Lulu comes in and sees them, like, you know, palling around and, you know... Brooke's just about done making dinner. Right, and Lulu can't cook. No. Lulu still can't cook. No. And she's like, oh, well, okay. You know, and like, you can see, like, she's trying to fight not to be jealous. Yeah. But she's like, all right, this is weird. Mm -hmm. But thanks for showing my man another trait that you have and I don't. Right. Although Brooklyn planned to seduce Dante, she was interested in Johnny Sakara, which is gross because that was Olivia's boyfriend. Don't say it. It's so, so, so weird. Gross. My stepmom and I were trying to sleep with the same guy. That's disgusting. Yep. And Carly warned Brooke to stay away from him. Carly demanded that Brooke make progress, progress with Dante and the two women staged an argument for Lulu's benefit. They planted the idea in Lulu's head that Dante was destined to cheat because as Sonny's son, Cheating was part of his DNA. Oh, that's just wrong. Right. 
Brooklyn arranged for Dante to find her locked out of her apartment wearing only a towel. I remember that. Again, Mm -hmm. back to the men's t-shirt thing. (laughs) Have you ever gone outside in a towel? All the time. (laughs) Never. Happened on Desperate Housewives, too. Susan wound up naked in the bushes. Yes. Never. Right. When Dante did not make a move, despite Brooke's obvious interest, Brooke realized he truly loved Lulu. Brooke resorted to drugging Dante's drink, and she arranged for Lulu to find them in a compromising position. Lulu was upset with Dante, but she quickly realized that he had been drugged. Brooke knew she had been caught, so she told Lulu about the deal she had made with Carly, but things backfired for Brooke when Carly was able to turn the blame back onto her. Mm. Brooklyn was alone and broke with damaged with a damaged reputation when she almost turned to the Quartermains for help. Nicholas Cassadine provided her with another option. He hired Brooklyn to be his date for business functions, Ugh. which is basically called an escort. Yeah. They also attended Luke and Tracy's wedding together, as well as Brenda and Sunny's wedding. Just as Brooklyn began to develop romantic feelings for Nicholas, Liz made it clear she was also interested in a relationship with him. Nicholas and Liz had a child together named Aiden, and Liz used their son to get closer to Nicholas. Every time Nicholas and Brooke started to get close, Liz interrupted them. When Liz arranged a special dinner for Nicholas, Brooke conveniently got a flat tire in front of Liz's house. Nicholas thanked Brooke for causing his evening with Liz to end early. Nicholas and Brooklyn admitted that they had feelings for one another and made love. Liz walked in on an intimate moment between them and decided Aiden could not spend time at Windermere if Brooke was present. <laughs> assuming they were two consult, consult, <laughs> consenting right. adults. Assuming they weren't hooking up on the living room couch in front of Aiden, I'm Correct. not sure how you get to say no to that. Right. Nicholas stood up for Brooke and asked Liz to leave. When Elizabeth's son, Jake, was killed after being hit by a car, Nicholas knew he needed to focus on helping Lucky and Liz grieve instead of his relationship with Brooklyn. Nicholas encouraged Brooke to pursue with the offer she had to tour with a Latin band. Do you know how fun that would have been? Because Lois used to manage Miguel. Ricky Martin. That would have been amazing. That would have been amazing. If that was. Okay. (laughs) Nicholas and Brooke both wished the timing and circumstances had been different and parted as friends. Brooklyn moved out of Windermere and away from Port Charles to pursue, pursue her music career. I wonder if that was Ricky Martin's band, or if it was Miguel's band. Have, has he ever been mentioned again? Not that I remember. Okay. He should be, though, because that was so good. It was. Which brings us to present day. And, I mean, she's only been on for two days. Two so, days. Like, there's nothing and, to be written about. Right. That first day, she didn't you didn't even know who she was. Well, you didn't really know who she was until the end of yesterday anyway. Right. So, found a couple articles. One was by ABC Soaps in Depth, What Happened to Brooklyn Ashton on General Hospital, and basically everything that we just said. And, oh, here, the first person to play Brooke was, her name was Brooke. Yes. Ratting, when the character was first introduced. 96 to 01, yeah. Yep. And then she was written out in 2001, returned in 2004, played by Adrienne Leone. After leaving in 2006, Leone returned in 2010 for another stint until 2011. And then in 19, Amanda Seton became the third actress to play the role. And she was from Days or One Life to Live? One Life to Live. One Life to Live. Yeah, One Life to Live. Okay. Because that's also under a SoapDirt.com article I found. General Hospital spoilers, Brooklyn Ashton back as a love interest for Nicholas or Chase. (gasps) No. Yeah. So General Hospital spoilers promises. So this is an article from last week, and it's saying that she's coming back. Yeah. And then it's guessing. And it says, is back and could be a love interest for Nicholas Cassadine or Harrison Chase. No. Remember, Brooke and Nicholas once had deep feelings for each other and ended things on a friendly note. And Harrison Chase may be available soon. Why? (laughs) No doubt Michael Corinthos may come between him and Willow Tate, leaving the detective up for grabs. Oh, no. You're wrong. I'm sorry. (laughs) Whoever wrote that, that is not what's happening. Chase and Willow. Forever. I'm not going to call her out on it, but no, <laughs> no. But Brooklyn's return is bound to ruffle some feathers. Oh yeah. And then they like speculate that I'm not even going to get into that. Oh, good. And my parent report for the board meeting last night was <laughs> attached to that. Attached to that. So, <laughs> so we went to social media. So, what do you think first? What was your first impression? I did not like her. I I'm not a fan. 
No. First of all, Julian is way too old for her, and she was way too flirty with him. And I thought for a second that she was there because she knew that Olivia had tried to buy the bar, and he backed out, and she was just kind of scoping things out and going to make trouble in that way. But she really did seem like she had no idea that that had gone on. And it would make sense that she wouldn't know because the way that we see it, she doesn't really talk to Ned that often. Right. So how would she know that? And there was really no other reason for her to be so cozying up to him. Right. So I read somewhere and someone said it, obviously, because I read it. (laughs) Somebody said they thought it was Kendra that just recast because they didn't do an introduction. They didn't. They didn't. And yeah, they do look similar. And their age is similar now that they've aged her up to 33. We went on Instagram, and I just posted, first impressions, tell us below. Passerelle Robin, I read that's the new Brooklyn, Ned's daughter. Becky underscore meme, not so much bratty already. Uh Mm Uh-huh. Jenny girl, she's cool and will shake up certain people. True. Love Shay, not acting like Ned's daughter. Maybe Sunny's daughter I could accept. Mmm. I don't know. Sunny, if he had a daughter that had gone away, I could see her coming back acting like that. Not a daughter that Sunny had a real hand in raising. Miss Ethel, 2002, didn't think she would be that young. And I said she was actually aged up 10 years when we last saw her. So she should be in her early 20s, but now she's early 30s. And yeah, she's essentially the same age as Maxie, though, mm-hmm. because that was all the, if she went to school with Maxie last time she was here. Abby 57, that's Brooklyn. Why is she acting self-righteous? LOL, Brooklyn was nice. And then a lot of people, divorced underscore traveler. If it's Ned's daughter and they have her sleep with Julian, everything is going to hit the ceiling. (laughs) Correct. Yeah. (laughs) Let's just go there for a second. No, no. Ned's daughter would be sleeping with his wife's baby baby daddy. daddy. No. (laughs) That's disgusting. M.M. Hansen, 55, she's acting like Brooklyn. Actually, she's acting like her mother, whose name escapes me right now. Her mom was unbelievably windy and sassy at the same time with a heavy New York accent. And we're like, Lois! And I just said, I was like, she was a spitfire, but she was sweet. She was. She didn't get nasty until she had to get nasty. Yeah. And this trick, not that she was being nasty to Julian, but it was like high and mighty. Like, I know you want to talk to me and get me another drink, blah, blah, blah. No, and who does that to a perfect stranger? Well, especially, it, yeah. Yeah. If she knew who he was, not that she's close with Olivia, but if she knew who he was and what he had done, then maybe that would explain it. But I would have expected her at the end to say, oh, yeah, you screwed my stepmom out of getting this place or something. Right. She didn't say any of that. So that's just her personality. I really hope not. Right. And even whenever she walked into the corner maid, she was crappy with them about, they changed the front of the house. She had to walk around, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, hi, Dad. Right. Like, what? I think that she's working with Nicholas. I think that's who was on the phone. Oh, that would make sense. <gasps> okay, so we're going to talk about this on the weekly re- like on the weekly recap, too. But how about Julian thinking that she was an escort? Yes. Oh, my gosh. And offering her money. so funny. I'm sure he could have made more elsewhere. And hands were like 15 bucks. <laughs> Oops. That was funny. But, yeah, so, I mean, I guess we're going to see what happens. You know, I really don't, I don't see her as a prospect for Chase. No. No, I mean, she was a nice girl. When she was running around with Georgie and Dylan and all that, she ended up being a nice girl. She had some issues, but she was a nice girl. If they could bring that back, that would be wonderful, and they could use another fun person to join in with Maxie and Lulu. Right. And, you know, somebody who doesn't let your kid get kidnapped while you're having a conversation (laughs) or whatever. Maybe. That would be fun. Somebody to work with Nina. She could be the face of deception for Lucy. Like there's all kinds of of different different things. things that she could do that would make her a nice girl. And I would be okay with that. But this attitude has got to go. Yes, I agree. And one thing I forgot to mention was the reason why Carly wanted Brooklyn to break up Dante and Lulu is because she blamed Dante for Michael going to prison. Ah, yeah. So, right. That was that. Because I was like, wait, wait, why? Because Carly loves Lulu now. She does. Did not so much. Well, I mean, she didn't love 
Dante. So, but yeah, so that's the quick little snippet recap of Brooklyn Ashton. I can't wait to see where she goes, who she ends up with. That's well, the whole point. But now Ned's last name is Quartermain. Mm hmm. So she's off by herself. Uh, yeah, she's Ashton with no other Ashtons. So maybe she changed her last name to Cerulo. Maybe. She should. She should. Because she's not going to be a Quartermain. No, absolutely not. Brooklyn Quartermain. No, she's going to be Brooklyn Cerulo. Yeah. But yeah, so I think that's it. So have a good weekend. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 